Hi there, and welcome back to another edition of Scale Up Radio, the podcast inspired by the entrepreneurial scale up system and designed to make navigating our scale up journeys that little bit easier by learning from others' experiences. I'm Kevin Brent, and I'm thrilled to bring you today's episode featuring Monica Ginesh, the founder of Best of Hungary, a remarkable business that imports and sells authentic premium Hungarian food and wine in the UK. Starting as a small side project, Monica has grown the business to a £700,000 annual turnover operation and has overcome challenges that we all know of like Brexit and the COVID-19 pandemic with a focus on quality and deep relationships with the producers. And I'd like you to listen out for that section because that really explains how Monica has built an authentic competitive advantage. And make sure you don't miss any future episodes by subscribing to Scale Up Radio wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. You can also nominate a guest for Scale Up Radio if you know someone with an interesting Scale Up story, and you can find out how in the show notes. Today, Monica shares how her background as a Hungarian dentist turned into a passion for bringing a taste of Hungary to the UK, the growth of her business and her future business plans, including launching her own brand, Monica's Kitchen. And whether you're a foodie, an entrepreneur, or someone who loves a good success story, this episode is for you. Welcome to another episode of Scallop Radio. I'm delighted today to be joined by Monica Ganesh, who is the founder of Best of Hungary. So Monica, welcome to Scallop Radio. Thank you very much to having us and having me mainly because my son is the other part of the business, but he's in the warehouse working at the moment. Uh, so the story is very easy. Uh, I'm a Hungarian person living in UK now eight for 18 years. Uh, I'm a dentist and I'm a public health specialist. Uh, graduated back in Budapest in very, very long time ago through the time, what you call communist time, we call it only socialist time, so it, before right. the political changes. Yeah. And I always loved the countryside. i grown up in a countryside in a very small village. My father was a vet, and he teached me the value of the agriculture and the good and healthy food mm -hmm. and how to look after the animals. So i grown up with the values of why we appreciate our countryside and what are our values growing vegetables and fruits and looking after the animals but then i gone to the public health and dentistry where i learned that if you don't have a healthy food what are the consequences diabetes cardiovascular disease obesity and also bad teeth right. and, and i always loved dealing with food and cooking for people. I am well known that wherever I lived, I lived in Los Angeles for six months. I always cooked for people and through cooking and gastronomy. I love to speak about culture, our history. You can speak, you just have one dish out and then you can introduce your whole country in the last 600 years because oh, wow, of the ingredients yes. and the taste yes. and where all the ingredients came from. You know, there's, there's lots of stuff which is we grow now in Hungary, but we're not used to grow that sort of vegetables, aubergine or where the grape came came from originally, what we have now as a red wine called bush blood. So there's lots and lots of stories around gastronomy. And, and I always loved that part of the world. Um, and you've created a business around the best of Hungary. So do you want to just explain what that business is? I, I have an idea because you sent me a lovely, a lovely parcel uh, a little, little while ago for me to sample a few goodies. So um, do you want to just tell us what the business is, the best of Hungary? Yeah, so the business started from the idea that when we moved here, we couldn't hardly buy any Hungarian ingredient. So when I invited my colleagues and my nurses and my friends, uh, always my friends brought the ingredient in their luggages from Hungary. So whenever we had friends over from Hungary, we said, we're happy to buy you clothes. Just put all the sausage and the bacon and the salami and, of course, the paprika in your luggage because we can't source them. And that went on. And then I had more and more patients coming to have Hungarian goulash in my kitchen. And it became a really big problem where I get all the ingredients. Yeah. So the idea was that if I have problem, all the others Hungarian 
I, we have now roughly about 160,000 Hungarian living in UK. Okay. I have the same problem that they rely on their loved ones and their friends to bring the ingredients. And the other story was that I have patients who went to Hungary. There's about 700,000 Brits go every year to Hungary. Oh, and they love, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And Hindus and okay. even yeah. our weddings and yeah. big family yeah. events. And then they came back and they asked me where they can buy the wine, where they can have Hungarian salami, uh, goose liver. And I said, well, I don't know. Sorry, I can't recommend anywhere. So we thought that the market here, Hungarian food is well known from the medieval time when Hungary was really the country of Europe and even Queen Victoria had Hungarian wine called Stokajasu. Okay. So, yeah, so let's get a small business. And the idea was when I retire at age of 64, 65, it will be mommy little side business <laughs> and I will go to food festival and sell the paprika and the honey and I yeah. speak about and I cook for my patients and it's just like joy and love what I love about food. And this is how it all started just three months after the Brexit vote in 2016. Right. Yeah. When we didn't know what Brexit means and yeah. I never had any food business i am myself is more like a scientific person i worked at the samuelweiss university lecturing public health uh, done european union funded research projects published books in america in finland so i never sold anything not even a used pair of shoes to my friends <laughs> And then my son, who was an economist by then, he finished his master's degree and went to do the PhD. He thought he will be working for the United Nations as a researcher again. Mm -hmm. So none of us were in trade or we had yeah. no clue about even the basics of how you sell something. But we had the business and, and then started on food festivals, local food festivals. All my nurses came, the whole practice came to support me. My Brilliant. patient came and bought items which even didn't know what to, how to use. Or yeah. I had a lady patient who came to buy honey, but she never ever eaten any honey, but she wanted to support my family business. So the Keredigion, so the county where we live in Wales, is an extremely supporting and kind working environment for naive people like myself. Mm, fantastic. Yeah. So, so you've mummy's little business on the side has turned into a little bit more than that now. I know you've got a team yeah. of team of five people working in the business, and and what what you know what sort of can you give us an idea of the size of the business? I don't know, number of customers or something that you're happy to share. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so we this year we do roughly about seven hundred thousand pound. Yeah, gross. Uh, we send out roughly about fifteen thousand orders in a year. Mm -hmm. which is goes directly out from the warehouse. And then because we sell also on Amazon, we have another 20,000 orders, which is going to the Amazon. So Amazon fulfill them. Right. That's directly to the, that's the retail side of the business. Yeah. We have also a wholesale side. Uh, we supply Michelin star restaurant in based in this county. Uh, also businesses in London, restaurants, high end wine bars, and also chocolate is using some of our products as ingredients, charcuterie is using our paprika and other places where they're using our, our honey. So we have also a reasonable sized wholesale side of the business. Very good, very good. So what have been some of the challenges on the way then? You mentioned that none of you had actually sold sold products before so what what have been some of the key lessons that you've learned along the way most important is if you are authentic and honest and you don't overplay that how well you know already how to do business then people are very keen to support you yeah we never ever met anyone in this country who didn't help us when i really turned to them and asked for help excellent one of the biggest challenge, of course, was that how a public health specialist can learn food business yeah. on a fast truck. 
Yeah, in a in yeah. a foreign country. Yes, and also learn the culture. And I, and I gather, I gather you were saying before we started recording that English is your sixth language. Yes, so I never actually learned English in any school. I learned by living in uh, LA in California for six months. Yeah, well, you put me put me to put me to shame. I can talk a little bit of French, a little bit of Italian, but, but that's about that's about it. But six six languages and and your English is is amazing. So yeah, but it explains why because I came from I coming from Central Europe, where history explains all. So my father was half Slovakian, my mother was half Austrian and half Italian. Uh, I went to the secondary school where we had to learn Russian. Mm -hmm. And then age of 12, I had to choose another language, which was German. Yeah. And then you go to the medical school and without learning and knowing Latin, you are no one. Yeah. So that explains it all. That yeah. it wow. was, and it was an experiment, I think, with our generation, the Russian language, and it didn't harm us at all. So I learned 10 years of Russian. Yeah. Uh, I still like the classical music, which is coming from Russia. I like the literature. Of course, I don't like the politics, but politics comes and goes. Yes. But the Russian values are the same. And reading books originally written in Russian and able to enjoy it, it was very nice when I was younger. Very good. Very impressive. So, so yes, you're saying that challenge of um, you know, public public health trying to trying to then get into yeah. You but know. you you also learn that there are skills which are you easily move it to one sector to the other. So okay. when when you are a lecturer, and if you are a good lecturer, you're always looking for your best student. Mm -hmm. And in Hungary at that time, we had also a system where you help them to achieve their best. So there are extra curricular activities where you literally invite them in your room and you ask what they're interested for and you help them to do their first very small research project. And there are conferences for the student when they can showcasing the result. And then if they won at the national level, which some of my students done, then there are international student conferences, which is at that time paid by the Hungarian government. Mm -hmm. Send them there and then comes the Erasmus pro program, which is for the best student. They can travel in Europe and go one semester to study another university. And they're coming home and then they are more clever than they ever before. So <laughs> if you think that is a skill, I learned how to not nurture this young student. Mm. This is what I'm doing now with the Hungarian producers. Okay. So I found hopefully the best in their own league. So of course, paprika, honey, this is all different producers. Mm -hmm. And I taste the product, we visit them, and then we offer them a help to put their products through the Great Taste Award, uh, oh. help them with the labeling, might be developing a product, a sauce or a cream or whatever, which is fitting in the British cousin, yeah. which they don't need to produce in Hungary if they never left the country because Hungarian don't eat. So I'm sort of an intercultural translator between the two culture. And I also help them the same way. I call them every month. We have Zoom meetings. I give them feedback what's working in the British uh, market and what doesn't. Every okay. six months, apparently the British taste is changing. So I buy a lot of products in Fort Newman Mason and all these very well known places sending home, ask them to taste it, then we speak about what they were what their experience is. And on this way, I help them to work at an international level instead of just at the Hungarian market. Mm. And this it's very, very good for my I mean, I love the job what I'm doing. Honestly, it's gave me a new chapter of my life. So I retired two years ago from NHS. So I was okay. 60 years of age. Uh, from NHS, you can retire when you're 60. So I took the retirement yeah. and I feel like 10 years younger. And I love <laughs> I love my life because I love my job. Fantastic. And I can, I can see the smile on your face. You so I it. represent my original country in the country which I choose 18 years ago, which is our home now. So clearly we 
we almost like Welsh. We're not just British. We're also Welsh. <laughs> and through that journey, I can bring so much joy over. And and the experience of what I had back in the 60s and 70s, I can translate to the British public now in 2024 and give them an idea about how we cook, what we cook, what ingredients, and promise that we get the best from Hungary. That's why our business name is Best from best of Hungary, yep. because we get best from that country. Yeah, very good. And and how did you create some, how did you cultivate some of the relationships with the buyers in this country? You know, you mentioned Fortman Mason, you mentioned some other, you know, you're in some fairly, fairly and, and high-end restaurants by the sounds of it. You know, how did you build those relationships? So most of them coming through our website. So they, they Google, I mean, these days, you know, online is yeah. easy. So apparently our website is very nice. So they Google like a Mongol, it's a salami or paprika, which has a great taste of it. And then our business comes up and then they call. And then they see this is a very naive woman at the other end of the <laughs> phone. <laughs> but loves the country and loves the gastronomy. And I always happy to send out samples. And then either we meet personally or we do a Zoom meeting. Yeah. And then they realize I have another 200 beautiful items behind me. Yeah. And it's all, I know, the, I know the producer, I know the county, I know the village, I know how they live, I know their family. And because we know everything about the producers and then they can see this is authentic. Yeah. Not selling something made in China, labeled in Hungary and That's sold for a high price in UK. Yeah, I I I love that. The um yeah, the 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 real the focus first of all on on Hungary, so you're absolutely clear what you're about, but then really drilling down in depth and getting to get knowing having at your fingertips those names as you said, you know, literally of the of the producers knowing the source of all of your all of the food that you recommend. I think that uh, I, I can see how that would really have helped you to develop the business. And I always offered for the buyer that they be very welcome if they want to visit that producer or if they want to have a tour, uh, if they pay just the uh, airfare, so the flight ticket, we pay the rest. So they can visit the producers, they will welcome them, they will pick okay. up, pick them up from the airport. Uh, and one producer, I mean, we've done a few times that it was a wine tour and then the winemakers passed at the border of the county to the next winemaker, the guest. And then they can have a three days, four days travel, tasting 10 different winemakers in on between. They can have a few food items as well and they can make their own mind if they want what we yeah. can offer if they want to work with us and there is no any cost involved almost nothing very good very good so tell me you know has has the marketplace changed from when you started when you, you said when you started you were unable to get any of these ingredients yourself so how's the marketplace changed now so there is a, a big importer who imports the basics basic hungarian food so it's for people who work mainly is for Hungarians who are in low paid jobs, but also right. some other people who don't want to spend. So they're not for premium quality food. They want to have a cheapest Hungarian beer or whatever. Yeah. So is, is that company and then us, there is nobody else in this market. Of course, some British company import one Hungarian wine or even three. Yeah. There are other companies who are importing one Hungarian honey. But the portfolio of what we offer is over 200 food products mm -hmm. and 75 wine. So we have 40 producers all together. In that sense, we are the only one. And we are, of course, the largest of premium Hungarian food and the wine importer, retailer and wholesaler in UK. And that's the reason why the Hungarian embassy works with us closely. Yeah. Because they realize that uh, I'm going for the best students and the best students can achieve really high in this country. So we won the last five years, we won over 100 great taste awards with our food products. Wow. 
and we, we nominate them. So we speak to the producers. I explain why I think this or that product would work very well. And then we do the whole procedure, the typing in, the send the sample, all, all the steps what you need to do. Same we do with the winemakers. So winemakers who don't speak a word of English, we help them to fill the form, send the sample, pay the duty, make sure that the, board, the wine arrived on time in a box. And, and then the celebration is, it feels that is a joint effort because we advise them and we help them through the journey. And therefore the Hungarian embassy is very closely helping, promoting the excellence, helping promoting that is good quality in Hungary. Uh, and we are very lucky because we have one designated uh, diplomat who is looking after the agricultural items in UK. Okay. And in the last five years, we worked very hard together. We've done some events, some professional tastings. Okay. And because the Brexit brought a lot of administrative work, yeah. she also helps. So she's ahead of the, what is coming next month, what is coming in six months. And she helps us to get prepared and... So far, we never failed with one uh, items. We always were fine. Costume clearance is always seamless, so it's all going well. Excellent. And and how's the business changed since your son came in? So he's what differences has he brought to the business with his um, the fact that he's a, a you know a, a, a trained economist and uh, you know what what's what's changes has he made to the business? Yeah. So I read your book. Oh uh, wow. <laughs> and that there are four different personalities in the in the business world. Yeah. So I am a cockatoo. Okay. I'm sure by now you realized. Yeah. And my son is an old owl. Yeah. So he likes the detail and the numbers. Loves yes. the details and he loves crunching the numbers. He's of course thirty years younger than myself, and he's a man. So to two totally different personalities, which made the business I think much stronger. Yeah. And of course, as an economist, he didn't go to the mummy little side business. Yeah. We sat down once and he asked me, can he make it big? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, of course, yeah. It was Friday late evening after working in dentist <laughs> all week. I said, yeah, yeah, just go to sleep. And <laughs> before Brexit, we also, we also had a business in Germany. So we sold through the Amazon in Italy and France and Germany. So yeah, he grew the business very hard, but very efficient. And he learned about online sale and all sorts of little details, which, of course, at the beginning I couldn't learn because I was full time. Yeah. Plus, plus for me, probably it would be much more harder. I also love numbers. So crunching the numbers, we both very good and Excel tables and seeing the t changes. So at the beginning, we didn't have wholesale. We just had the food festivals and the local markets and the website and the Amazon eBay eBay gone, eBay is not good for food businesses anymore. Yeah. And then came COVID. So just to give you an example, in 2019, a whole year working hard, we done 93,000 pounds and we were very, very proud because we built it from nothing, from zero to 93 in three years. That's good. Yeah. In COVID, Boris Johnson announced that the country is closed. Yeah. Practice closed on the very same night. Mm -hmm. So I stayed home and the business started to go crazy. Right. Came Easter, no one could travel. So all our Hungarian customers contacted us and they said, but they need their Easter home and they need the horseradish and they need the chocolate, all the traditional Easter food. Mm -hmm. So in that year, we grown from 93,000 to 526,000 pounds. Wow. And that was COVID first year. Yeah. Of course, cash flow was extremely difficult. I mean, the whole business is from my income as a dentist. Okay. At one point, that income was not enough. Yeah. Because you needed stock, but you right. needed five times more stock. Yep. But what stock? One week, salami is everybody's favorite. Next week, they want to have all money. Well, how can you buy five times so much stock? I just didn't have five times more income, of course. So how did you how did you solve we that? We turned to the Welsh Development Bank and we explained the situation. We gave the numbers and we made a, a financial plan. And after seeing our business plan, they we got the help. 
And then came the next problem. There was not enough packaging material in UK because online business were blooming. Yeah. So then we had the package, the boxes also from Hungary on a pallet. Yeah. Because lucky, not luckily, but in Hungary, the online sale didn't go through the roof. And we asked our food producers, can they send us empty boxes? And they said, yeah, how many do you want? Five, 10? Oh, no, no, 600. <laughs> what, Monica, why do you need 600 boxes? Because we can't buy the boxes. Yeah. So every year brought something which we didn't think. And I mean, in this COVID year, because I've, at the end we had to go back to work as a dentist and my son couldn't do the packing alone. I mean, five times growth is just yeah. not something you want to do. So I turned to my practice manager and I said, I have to give my notice because after work, I'm still packing until 11 in the evening and my son just packing mm. day and night. Mm. And she said, no, 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 you are a good dentist. You can't leave the practice. <laughs> Yeah. I will ask my husband to work for you. Oh. So, because we knew it's a small county, so we know each other. We know the husband. Yeah. And he came along and he said, yeah, my wife said that I have to work for you, darling, because <laughs> she can't afford to lose you as a dentist. And she's now a warehouse manager. This is the fourth year we will celebrate end of this month when we employed him because we just could not do it alone. Great. And, and, but you're not, you're not working as a dentist anymore, are you? Don't, no, don't... no, but I'm not packing neither because I, as a dentist, my shoulder and my neck, I have a chronic disease, so I can't really lift heavy objects anymore. Right. Plus it's so much to do now in the business and paperwork side and uh, organizing all sorts of professional tastings and wine tastings and the events that uh, now we have three people doing the packing. Mm. And then if you think about came the 2021, then the Brexit happened. Yeah. And suddenly we needed all the documents and costume clearance and costume clearance cost money. Mm -hmm. So now we have a logistic partner in Hungary who collects all the product and in his warehouse. And then he does one bill and then it's okay. one costume clearance. But it took us time to figure out. Yes. Otherwise, getting small orders from Hungary, it would be so expensive that we couldn't afford. Mm. And then came 2022, the Royal Mail people decided, the employed people, that they go on strike mm -hmm. eight weeks before Christmas, which is yeah, our yeah. most busiest period of life. And then we turned to another company. I don't want to name them. And they said, of course, they can do it. And they didn't show up a few days uh, to collect the 160 orders. Oh. So every year has yeah. its own challenges, I think. I think by now we learned that despite food business and grocery in UK is very competitive, one of the most competitive in the world. And you have to be really on the ball and focused but it's so much unexpected that you have to be extremely flexible. So six months, honey is going through the roof. Next six months, hardly any sale. Mm. It's just an example or how people taste is changing or how people expectations are changing about not just the price, but also what sort of ingredients they want to buy. You know, people turn to very healthy lifestyle, healthy diet. Now they're going back to work. They don't want to eat that healthy anymore. But we've gone through phases when poor food, food producers, they couldn't understand why we suddenly order every week. Or, you know, it was hard for them as well, because if your business is growing fivefold, it means yes. for some producers, it's hardly any change. But for some others, it's tenfold. Mm. And COVID first year in Hungary was very hard for them because there is no tourism. Restaurants are all closed for months. Mm -hmm. So some had no orders coming, only us. One producer yeah. called me and asked me when I'm planning to order again. And I said, well, in the next two weeks, why? He said, because I would need to pay my colleagues the salary. Yeah. I said, yeah. okay. And he said, I have no income, Monica, just your orders. Wow. Oh, Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I, I spoke to my son and we agreed that we send the money like prepayment and then we will place the order later, but I wanted him to keep his colleagues because if wow. you lose your yeah. worker, 
what you do after. Yeah. Bird goes back to normal, but you don't have people working for you. What a what a lovely example of um of really a partnership, a true partnership as a as opposed to a, a yes a, a a producer and buyer sort of relationship. Yeah, typical yeah. a typical one. Yeah, and that's good. why you know when I read your book and you said you what is the competitive advantage you have yeah. to analyze it. So most of our producers we are the exclusive British partner. Yeah. Uh, I mean we went through very hard times. And you've, I mean, building on that, I mean, it, it, it's clear, I think, to anyone listening, how you have created that competitive advantage. It's not just, and I, and I think that's a really good lesson because it's not just about differentiation. Because yes, you're different because you're focusing on Hungary and 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 your premium and all those things. But what gives you the competitive advantage is that plus the deep relationships that you're building with your producers, your suppliers, um, that's then transferring also into then the relationship with your customers. So you're you're you've really built that strong competitive advantage, I think, that way. Would you would you say that's fair? Yes, yes. I mean, half of them we treat as a family members. Yeah. Uh, not just wishing Merry Christmas and happy birthday, yeah. but also when something unexpected happens in their life or in our life, could be bad or could be good could be excellent or be proud of so my son went to do a postgraduate degree in Hungary in wine marketing because he never finished his uh, primary schools. We moved to UK. So I always said, yes, he has three degrees in UK, but he doesn't have a Hungarian uh, <laughs> degree. So when um, an English speaking uh, postgraduate program appeared in Tokai region, uh, I ask him nicely, can he do it just for my own sake? So my son also have a Hungarian degree. And he said, OK, he does it. So when <laughs> Zoltan finished his postgraduate degree and he got the diploma, the first I called all the winemakers in Tokai, uh, they supported him through the degree. So they invited him for dinners when he was there. He, they helped him with uh, gathering information for his degree. Uh, but it was very nice when actually I had the degree in my hand and I phoned them and I said, actually, I'm holding Zoltan degree. It's <laughs> written in English, but also it's a Hungarian degree. So I can die now because my son has also a Hungarian degree. <laughs> no, no, yeah. <laughs> and I, I cheer it with the cheesemaker and with the winemakers and they know how important it is for us and they happy together. We are happy together and they're happy for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love that. And, and it's, and that's such a difficult thing for somebody else to replicate because you're so authentic with it. You built those relationships. Somebody, I couldn't just come along and say, well, I'm going to do that because it's a nice business. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't replicate that. Um, and, because you don't speak Hungarian and half of <laughs> well, English. Yeah, there, there is, there is that small hurdle also. Yes. Um, but it, but you've, you've built such a strong uh, differentiation and, and competitive edge there that it's just very hard for somebody else to, to replicate. And of course, the more, the more that you reinforce it, the more that you, grow the business the more that that is reinforced and you've and i think you've shown as well that it is possible to have a very personal business and personal relationships but do it as do it at scale you know you don't you don't have you don't, it doesn't have to be one or the other you can you can manage both um if you get it right i think you just have to love it and of course, we. I mean, I read a lot of books and of course my son had a lot of information through the university, even if it's theoretical, it helps when you don't know nothing about, you know, making business. Yeah. Uh, I think if you are honest and you're not going just for the profit, because profit, of course, is important. This is how we grow. This is how we sustainable. This is how we have all the shelving in the warehouse. You know, if you don't grow and you don't have money, you fail. Yeah, so I'm yeah. not speaking about you don't need money. Of course you need money. But getting out from the bed every morning or working through very rainy months, it does help me to know that here in a teeny tiny village, almost at the edge of the Welsh countryside, I represent 40 businesses, which I am very proud and I get the product out in the wide yep. and 
you know, be supplied Windsor House and ladyships and lordships and embassies in London. All sorts of places our products are going. And I help them to get the message out that we have excellent products and we have a very healthy and very good agriculture in Hungary. And if I looking by, back my own centers or my great, great grandfathers, they, they, they had lunch and they grow different things and they had animals and my father looked after sick pigs and horses. Mm -hmm. And I just in that line, in the tradition that we helped for the agriculture and for the country to show what we can produce the best. So I am in the line and my son is in the line. And yeah. uh, once we've done a calculation, how many people roughly we get in jobs in Hungary, over 30 people have jobs because we are selling the products. Right, yeah. Plus five, you know, three more in the warehouse. Yeah. So we're creating jobs. Yes. We have families to survive. Yeah. So that's also an important message. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really, really good. So what's the yeah, what what's what's the ultimate plan? What's the what's the legacy that you want to want to leave with the best of Hungary? So last year we decided that despite everything is with their own label. So because we are importer, we don't produce anything. Uh, last year I decided we started producing. Okay. So we have a new brand name, is Monica's Kitchen. Ah. So when Monica won't be around anymore, then the legacy will live on. And the first item which is coming in Monica's kitchen, of course, the Hungarian goulash. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Uh, so we really, turned yeah. to the Welsh government. We got a small fund and we started producing Hungarian goulash with the Welsh twist. So all the ingredients are locally sourced. Mm. Uh, potato is from the next county, but is originally from a Hungarian farmer. Right. And the salt is from the Welsh Sea, and the onion is the same county, and the Welsh black meat is also, of course, from Keratikion. The only item will be the Hungarian paprika, so ingredients, which is important. Mm. And in this way, we will start to produce food the way how the British palate likes. So the recipe has slightly changed. That's why with the Welsh twist, because your palate is slightly different than the Hungarian. Okay. And we also start to packaging the products here. So we get honey in bulk, 300 kilograms, and then we put them in jars here. So we're giving more jobs for the locals and reducing our carbon footprint. So we're not getting the heavy jars from Hungary. It's 2,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how nicely you put. It's a lot lots yep. to this country get all that footprint so we want to reduce and we want and also somehow we want to go back to europe so as if you get items here because of the brexit is impossible almost to re-export it mm -hmm. so we need a logistical partner somewhere at the french german, german border okay and then we start to again sell in germany and france and hopefully in italy that's that's the two plans Great. So you're actively looking for that importer now, are you? That, yeah. that, that the distributor joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. So that I, 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 it's been absolutely fascinating, Monica. And um, you know, I'm so impressed with what you've what you've achieved. I think I think it's fantastic. So um, yeah, very well done indeed. Are you all right for a couple of quick fire questions before we close? Yes, yes of course. So if you could go back to your younger self. What what advice would you give yourself? Be same how I am always been. So I'm always forward thinking. Uh, do the medical school again, but probably much sooner find my own way. Yeah. Uh, instead of waiting until age of 56. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Um you obviously read read a lot, and you've kindly mentioned my book a couple of times. So thank you. But what what other what other books or podcasts or learning resources would you like to highlight for other people? Uh, if you are in charge of running your business, if that is not your business, but you are employed to run the business, you have to keep up with that department. So not just reading marketing and management books, but also know your field. 
I don't know about computers, but I'm sure they are also changing rapidly. But food and wine market is okay. very rapidly changing. Yeah. And if you give up, then you get lost and people will take over. So many talented young people are out. You have to keep reading the analysis and meeting people about, because what you know now, it won't work in two years time. Very good. Excellent. Do you use any, is there any apps or bits of technology that you use in your, in your business? Yeah, so we use Shopify. That's the base of our website. And my son has quite a few additional apps, which is helping with the sale and helping for him to do the analysis. And I uh, love my gadgets. Uh, so I have lots of apps on my iPhone okay. and on my laptop, which I'm using, which is helping me making decisions. So what's your, what's your favorite one? What's the one you go to most? Probably the Barclays banking appointment. Oh. <laughs> yeah, very good, excellent. Who's had the most influence on you as a as a business leader? Would you say? My father. Yeah. Yeah, very good. He was a very good man, and uh, he, because at that time you couldn't work as a vet pri privately. He was a head of a part of a cooperative. And he looked after about 9,000 pigs and God knows how many more animals. And he he was probably the manager of about 50 people altogether in two villages. And I loved watching him. Excellent. Very good. And what's been your most successful way of generating more business? Being honest. Okay. Being authentic and smiling. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Love it. On, on that note, Monica, um, thank you very much indeed for being my guest on Skelet Radio. If people would like to find out more about you, get in touch with you, or find out more about the best of Hungary, what's the best way for them to do that? So, www.bestofhungary.co.uk or call Monica. People do call me. We have lots of customers who call me asking for advice about a recipe or wine pairing. Great. And they can find all the details through the website. Yes. Fantastic. Monica, thank you very much indeed for being my guest on Skelet Radio today. Thank you for the invitation again. I hope you enjoyed that discussion. And if you're building and scaling your own business, you might well be interested in our book, The Entrepreneurial Scale-Up System. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a practical handbook around scaling a business in a structured way. And you can order a copy on all your favorite online retailers, including an audio version, or you can find it and other supporting resources on our website, www.esusgroup.co.uk. That's esusgroup.co.uk, which is E-S-U-S-G-R-O-U-P.co.uk. This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast.